Hello and welcome to the Dream Job Ready podcast and video series. My name is Dane Sharp, I'm the host, and my guest on this episode is Mark Wheeler, Head of YouTube and Large Customer Marketing at Google. Please note that the opinions of guests are their own and not those of the companies they have worked for. This is Dream Job Ready with Dane Sharp. G'day Mark, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Dream Job Ready podcast. Awesome to have you here, can't wait to hear about everything you've been up to in your career uh, and most recently with Google. So kick us off, mate. What's your dream job and your role right now with Google? Yeah, great, Shelby. Um, firstly, thanks for inviting me in. Um, so my current role is I look after marketing for YouTube uh, across Australia and New Zealand. Um, and within that, basically that is around talking to and communicating with our audiences uh, online around um the amazing creators, the amazing content, the amazing artists, musicianal um, and long form film and short form uh, on the platform. So really communicating the benefits of of YouTube. Um, and there's a mixture of audiences that we talk to. As well as that, I also look after our large customer marketing uh, team. Uh, and that is a slightly different job, actually. That's all really about communicating ads um, to the to the advertising community. Um, and they gain the opportunity to grow their businesses uh, large, mainly. Uh, through using Google's advertising products and technology stack. And, you know, we'll obviously unpack uh, more of your role with Google uh, and with YouTube as we as we talk today. It's such a huge, diverse company. Can you talk to really quickly some of the other divisions within the business you work with, uh, some of the peers, uh, some of the external companies that you get to work with in your role? There's a bunch of um, products that we, we go to market to um, here and across the world. Um, and there's a bunch of functions in the company that we, we work with. So from policy to sales orgs, um, comms teams, and, and we all sort of cross-functionally work to communicate the benefits uh, and the helpfulness of Google products um, to our audiences. And dream job, just as it says on the job title? Yeah, definitely a dream job, actually. Um, Has it been a goal of yours to work with you know, Google for a while? Because if it's it's a top 10 company for students around the world to work for. Post sort of working at McDonald's, um, well, actually during, I think towards the end of my career there, um, I wanted to get back into to working in tech um, and for a technology company. I started my career, we'll probably talk about that later on, with Hewitt Packard, um, and really got the bug for, for digital and, and technology and the enablement that it can give and the sort of disruption that it's driving within a number of industries. And yeah, I definitely want to get it back into into tech. Um, and Google's top of the list for for wanting to work there. And there's a number of reasons why. Um, the culture and the way that they support the the, the employees and the and I guess the, um, the 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 focus on the people in the company is really really key. And I think as I've got further on my career, um, wanting to work for a company that has that at its heart and and have a, a really strong culture um, became really important for me actually as I got further through. And Google really takes that really seriously um, in terms of how we we look after our people, develop them. Um, but also from a product side, Google's products are helpful. We talk about helpfulness a lot in terms of our, our internal and external um, go-to-market sort of strategy. And I think a number of our products are helping communities and individuals and, and users around the world. Um, we're also user-first. And I think that's really important in a, in a technology and a product type way that you are user first and user centric. And I think that's the appeal for me for working at Google, not only culture, user first, um, but also the, the the focus on culture and, and people. The other piece I think for me is its mission and its purpose um, to organize the world's information, make it universally accessible and useful um, has been consistent for the 20 years that Google's been mm -hmm. sort of running. I think a company that is so focused on its on its purpose and, and continues to hold that true um, is, is somewhere that I wanted to work and, and sort of, yeah, was, was fortunate to get a job there. Well, let's let's talk about how you got the job there, mate. Let's, let's flash back in time a little bit. Um, I'd love to know what your first dream or dream job was when you were growing up, you know, what did you want to be when you were uh, an adult, Mark Wheeler? <laughs> um, well, maybe go a bit earlier. So I was about sort of uh, from about 10 years old, a um, bit of a sort of sports fan, mm -hmm. um, played a lot of sport, mainly cricket and football and sort of wanted to be a, a professional cricketer or a professional footballer, uh, like a lot of people back in, back in England. Um, and sort of played to a reasonably good standard at cricket. Like we, we were playing in sort of uh, 
county cricket in, in what's called in England. Um, I'm playing at a sort of a good standard. Uh, about 14, I got put forward to sort of West of England trials and sort of coaching weekends and um, sort of took the opportunity to, to think, oh, here we go. This is my big break. Going to be playing at Lords in the future and you never know, might, might, uh, might make a career out of it. But I think at that point, I really realised just the difference between me and the sort of the, my peers and the people around me um, and that I wasn't going to sort of make it, if I'm honest. And I think that was a, a clear realisation that I wasn't going to be a pro footballer or cricketer. Mm -hmm. And so I realised quite quickly I was going to have to get into business and um, and sort of change my focus, uh, if you like, in terms of what I wanted to do. Um, my my dad's in sales or was in sales and my mum's a bit of an artist streak and we always talked about advertising a lot in my house. I don't know why. Right. Like we enjoyed watching ads, TV ads and and talked about them and um it was never one where we'd walk away from the sort of the, the break, the ad breaks. Yeah. Um and I don't know why, I just it just seemed to resonate as an area of sort of marketing and advertising. So I just felt felt like an area I should be sort of leaning into. Um and so towards the end of my sort of schooling career, I sort of realized that that's sort of what I wanted to go into. Um, and so picked a university course um, that specialized in marketing. It's like a Bachelor of Arts in marketing. You're one of the lucky ones. It's, it's such a harsh reality for those some people that want to go on to be professional in sports or modeling or acting, et cetera, if they don't get to make that and have to make that next decision. Mm. Um, or for the majority of people that don't yet know what they want to do or haven't discovered that passion it for you to make that decision quite swiftly was was um you know a godsend from your chance from your opinion so so you looked at that and then you looked straight at schooling and looked at advertising marketing hmm. yeah and did you get any other guidance or advice along the way from other people in the industry or, or anyone that your parents knew etc that that helped that decision or not really I, I was fortunate i got a really strong family sort of around me mum and dad and um, a couple of bros um but no, no nothing external to that it was really um, quite just one of those things I just sort of realized I wanted to go into marketing and it felt that sort of mix between business and selling and a bit of creativity. So that sort of mix of my parents sort of came through. Um, yeah, it, it, was, it was a bit random actually. Like I studied economics, at A level, uh, geography and design. Mm -hmm. So again, a bit of business, bit of, a bit of, um, a bit of creativity in there as well. But, um, no, I just sort of stumbled, I guess, upon, upon the fact that I wanted to get into marketing and, and advertising was a, a sort of a passion point. That's really cool. Um, and this is going to be a tough question. It's a hard question for, for everyone. Is there any advice you could give to you know, students out there trying to make that decision right now, trying to figure out what they should do? Anything you've learned over time that would help? Yeah, like I think um, going and, and doing things that you're passionate about, I think is really important. I, I, I wanted to work in a job where I enjoyed getting up every morning and going to the going to work. And I, a lot of people talk about the fact that they'd want to be a sports person or pro, pro athlete. I think that was my first take. I was passionate about sport, a bit of a sport monkey, as you call it. Um, but I think you've got to lean, in your, lean into your passions and, and try and do something that you're going to enjoy getting up every day. Like if you go to work and you don't enjoy it, I, I feel that would be pretty, um, pretty challenging. What kind of uni student was Mark Wheeler? What kind of uni student was Mark Wheeler? Um, look, I probably was a bit slow to uh, lead into the sort of the work ethic. Um, I did a four-year sandwich course, what it's called in England, where you do sort of three years at the university and one year out in, in industry where I worked at Hewitt Packard. Awesome. Um, I deferred my starting university. I wanted to go and travel um, and came to Australia. And that's sort of when I fell in love with with Australia and Sydney, um, but also wanted to make sure I sort of had that break before I jumped into to three or four years of study. Um, the first couple, if I'm honest, was probably more social than work, uh, at least yep. the first year. Uh, I don't think my dad was too impressed with the, sort of the drinking degree um, <laughs> that I sort of discussed with him, but uh, it wasn't until I went away to work, I worked at Hewitt Packard and then came back that I really sort of buckled down, um, needed to sort of up my work ethic, realized that I needed to sort of, um, yeah, focus a bit more and work to actually get a degree and come out of it with a, with a decent degree. Um, so I was probably a bit slow to, to knuckle down, but once I'd been out of work, so I'd been out of university to go and work at Hewitt Packard and then came back, um, my whole sort of mindset shifted um, in terms of wanting to A, specialize in digital. I got that bug at Hewitt Packard. Yep. Um, and that really sort of changed my focus around marketing, but being focused on digital marketing and, and sort of how digital was disrupting a lot of, um, a lot of, industry in a lot of categories. Um, 
so yeah, I was a bit slow, but but got there in the end. Can can I ask about the the work placement? Um, you mm. know, different students have different situations at their universities or college. Some are mandatory placements, others are um, you know leveraged off your own will and initiative. Uh, I'm a huge advocate for it. Um, I went to a university. Um, my degree at the time, it was kind of up to you if yep. you wanted to go and chase that stuff. The university was very supportive of it, um, so much so that um, during my um, UOW degree, the third year I got a job, my lecturers were so pumped that I was in the media industry. They were super supportive. They were like, go work mm. and we'll work around you, which is – you know, is is hard to sort of dream up. Um, talk about how important you believe, um, you know, that work placement, work experience is to help put people in the right direction, learn on the job, and then rip into it when you get there. Yeah, I think it was um, it was a really important decision in my in my life actually around. Firstly, wanting to come out of university with some work, um, sort of professional experience. Um, I think a lot of, at least in England, and it's probably the same in Australia and around the world, there's a lot of people getting degrees now. And I think gone are the days where you get a degree, you get a job. And I think talking to my parents and working it through, the opportunity to A, go to a university that had a sandwich course, there wasn't that many in, yeah. in marketing, and then coming out with a, at least a year's experience, I felt would then set me up, hopefully for a better opportunity to get a job, sort of a real job when I came out of university. So um, a significant decision in my life and um, and definitely helped when I when I sort of came out off out of university to then get that, get that job and, and start my career proper. Do you give people advice to travel as well during those early years? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think getting out, traveling the world. I, I went on my own for quite a quite a slug of that, but with some friends as well. And I think getting into and experiencing different cultures, um, being on your own, that you have to go and sort of chat to people. Otherwise, you're gonna be stuck on your own, sort of reading books. Um, I definitely think helps your confidence. I think it definitely broadens your mind from being outside of your the world that you grew up grew up in. So I would definitely. Um, I would definitely recommend getting out there and traveling. Um, I think it just makes you a bit more of a well-rounded individual when it comes to then your career and work and, and experience. And the holiday here must have gone okay if you've ended up living and working here. So we'll get into that in a minute. But I did want to ask, you You must have um, been kicking yourself knowing early you wanted to go into advertising, finishing d your degree, and then you're in the London advertising scene. Like yeah, Talk us through that. Yeah, it probably looks a bit more um, uh, <laughs> succinct on paper than it was in reality, right. I think. That's agency world, though, isn't it, sometimes? Uh, well, a little bit, yeah, that's, that's true, yeah, a bit of a facade. But um, uh, look, it didn't it, – so I, I finished university and uh, I took another year, actually. Did you? Um, okay. Yeah, I had another break. Um, during university, I actually lost my bro, and I just sort of promised him I'd give a – sort of not live life to the sort of like every every day is my last, but yeah. um, at least get out there and do a bit more. And I was also in my head going, I'm going to work for 40 years. I won't get this chance again once I've got kids and family. It's pretty, pretty hard to have a break. So had another break, came out to Australia again. Did you? Yeah, I love, love, love the country and, and clearly do. I live here and I'm a citizen. Um, did a bit more travel to Kiwi this time um, and a bit more South Asia. Um, Southeast Asia, and then came back sort of with a bit of a bump, right? I've got to pay for the debt that I've sort of accumulated as I traveled around. Um, and now sort of the big lights of London were there to, to try and sort of start my career proper. It wasn't easy to get a job straight away, actually. I thought the having a sandwich year and that experience, like, easy door would be open, I'd be straight in. It still took a few months to get the sort of the right role, um, but was fortunate enough to join a, join a very, very small little tech company, little tech agency, um, three people. Yeah. One coder, one owner, and then me who was doing pretty much everything from making tea to the wages to um, pitching to clients. We had Kangol as a, as a sort of the only client. And it was it was a super good experience, like a, sort of a great start to my career because I had to do everything um, and, and really learn about business in a very small entity. Um, in tech, in digital, building a, a website, going back a little bit now, yeah. um, a microsite, a bit of flash, a bit of HTML backup, um, GIF backup. So yeah, I learned a lot in that first role and that was my intro into sort of the, the ad world and, and agency world. And that's the reality, right? Like you're not going to walk in and be the CEO of Google or overnight. No way. Um, so you've got you to start metaphorically at the bottom mm. um, and you've got you to build up. Um, do you do you believe that um, approaching that with the right mindset sets you up in the right way? 
Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, in agencies, you, you have sort of what's called runners, like the traditional, you're right at the bottom, you're running around, setting up meetings, uh, meeting rooms, getting yeah. tea for the clients. I think you learn a bunch at that stage of just how um, AdWord works, how the client and agencies interact and engage. And I think you've got to be super open, hopefully, to just try and get a broad view of what it's like. Um, hopefully have the right attitude that you can learn at that level and it's going to set you up and you'll grow and you'll get hopefully better as you go. Yeah. Um, but no doubt, I think you've got to have the right attitude to start. And I think that comes through when you're trying to look for that job that potential employers are going to be looking for, how they've got the passion uh, and do they want to sort of come in and not be too worried about what they're doing right at the start, especially at that stage of your career, um, to learn and, and, and sort of get better and grow. It's, I, I think I agree. I think it's so pivotal across any role that you're in or any business that you're in to be open to those opportunities and be willing to say yes, have a crack, try and figure it out. Um, but working for an agency, it's it's tenfold. And mm. you've got your people in an advertising or a digital agency that are that piece of furniture that have been there for consecutive years and, and in their role. But the majority of people are moving and shifting and changing clients and changing roles and changing positions pretty swiftly, right? Yeah. And, and I think it's it's such a um, critical thing to understand that it may not be perfect on paper uh, or as glossy as it now looks on, on your LinkedIn, <laughs> but um, you've got to have a crack, right? And if you don't like it, that's also helpful. Yeah, I think I think when you start in your career, you just want to be looking for learning opportunities and a, a sort of a, a platform to jump from. And I think... I was fortunate. I just I got a I got a role where I was literally just doing everything, and that sort of started me off, and then progressed to other bigger agencies. So I joined um, aptly named Agents.com, um, which was a pretty big at the time digital agency. Um, we had some big clients like British Airways and British Telecom, and uh, they were great times. Met yeah. my wife working in in agency world, um, and it was sort of the sort of the, the height of dot com and and, a, and and sort of digital, where we were building big microsites and banner ads and we had the media internally and it was it was some really great times inventing but, it as well to, to some degree right? it meant, yeah it it, definitely and i think um there's a lot of my friends are still from that era where you, you, there was no real line between work and and sort of play um you'd roll straight from the agency out into london for a few beers um you're pitching over weekends there was no sort of i'm clocking off i'm out um and the culture was just one where everybody was sort of driving to the same um, focus. And, and over a course of, I guess, four or five years in agency, I, I jumped around a bit just to learn um, how different agencies worked, different yeah. models. So I was sort of a really small agency to then a big digital mainly agency um, that got acquired and into an integrated agency um, and then moved, sort of got, got tapped on the shoulder to come and join um, Dare at the time, Dare Digital, to work on Sony Electronics, which was a, a really fun short period of time, but a really interesting job where we're sort of, as a category inventor, which was Walkman, Sony Walkman, yep. all of a sudden Apple came in with the, the iPod. Um, and all of a sudden Sony Walkman is then trying to sort of be a challenger brand back and sort of keep hold of its share. Um, and so that was a really interesting time across Europe working for, for Sony Electronics. And yep. again, sort of seeing the tech industry and digital and, and wanting to, I guess, lean into that a bit more. Um, and then, sort of four guys who owned or, or, or sort of were at a big agency then created a whole new agency called Work Club. And their philosophy was in an ad world and agency, talent and churn is high and, and there's not enough focus on retaining, developing and um, and building out, I guess, people within within the agency. So I love the philosophy. Um, I wanted to join Martin Brooks, who was a, a really inspirational leader at the time in, in, the, in the market and in, in the city. And so joined a startup again, sort of went back a little bit, um, number seven. Um, employee and again back into doing everything really it was um, it was fun times just that growth of agency I think by the time I left it was sort of up to 35 40 mm -hmm. um, some really great clients and and again learn a learn a bunch I did feel at the time was I jumping around too much um, and how would that look in my CV and I think that's something you sort of need to consider making sure that there's enough time and there's sort of um, there's not reasons why you're sort of moving on and leaving or, yep. or getting asked to move on. Um, but for me, it was about learning different agency models, different clients, global, local market clients. I really wanted to get a broad feel, if you like, or broad experience across a bunch of different agencies and a bunch of different clients. And I really enjoyed working in agency world. The culture and the energy is, um, is pretty unique and it's, it's good fun. Did you ever doubt what you wanted to do? Did you ever go advertising's not for me in any of those days? No way. No, I think um, I think I got the bug, yep. uh, and I, I was 
sort of just really um, and passionate about the industry and, and, and advertising and marketing more broadly. Yeah. Um, but no, no doubts. Just sort of, I guess, um, considering whether I wanted to stay in agency world or, or move to client, and that was a bit of a bit of a change. I was about to ask you that question because, you know, you mentioned some really cool brands there and you start getting exposed um, to more and more and different and diverse companies and people and brands. Um, how, how, did, how did you decide you wanted to make that switch eventually? Do you remember? Yeah, no, I do. I, I think one of the challenges in an agency world, it depends on the client, depends on the agency, is you're sort of working from brief to brief, campaign to campaign and quite short term. Um, and I felt I wanted to look a bit further out and work on a brand for a longer time. Yeah. Um, and so that was the appeal for me to work sort of client side and work in a company was to help shape the future of that company, that brand, work on longer term briefs and um, and the strategies and sort of move away from this quite short termism that you sort of get in agencies. Not all agencies, a lot of agencies are trying to help clients look further ahead. Um, but at least the agencies I was working was a bit short term. So I wanted to that to move um, at some point. I was then fortunate again, got the tap on the shoulder from um, a boss at Ainge.com actually, uh, who um, saw an opportunity. She'd moved also to Diageo. She was in the US um, looking after Smirnoff um, and she saw a role and thought of me because she knew I'd sort of spoken at some point to her probably about moving client side. Right. Um, and then got the opportunity to join Diageo in London, which um, was a great, a great opportunity. Was that the first personal who you know lead? That, that had got you a job up until that point, just out of curiosity? Yeah, I think it was actually. It was the the sort of the, somebody I had connected with when I worked Agency World. Um, she's still a, a friend and a mentor now, and I think you need to try and make those connections as you go through your career. Not everything's so, – like, sometimes they just happen organically. Other times you might want to try and create some of those connections, mm -hmm. but um, most of mine have been organic and either working with – Mainly, actually, working with people, all my all my bosses, actually. Yeah, you mentioned um, Martin Brooks before. Martin. Yeah, yeah, Martin. Um, Martin was one actually. I didn't know him before. I, I knew of him, didn't know him personally. Um, and I, I knew he was a, a sort of a, a pretty amazing leader. Um, and then when he came and spoke to me, it was like, yeah, this, this sounds pretty cool. What you're trying to do, um, and love to to have a crack. I think Michelle, um, working with her at Agents.com, um, we had a good connection, and she put me forward to the job. And unfortunate enough, um, I was able to to land it. Let's talk about mentorship. Um, some people gravitate naturally to it and go and seek that opportunities. Mm. Others are potentially too shy or it's not in their nature. Um, what's your experience with it? If, if I wanted Mark Wheeler as my mentor, how do I go about it? Yeah, good question. Um, I'm not sure there's a book for it, actually. I think it's the, the way I've approached it is I've had a connection with somebody, um, got to know them on a personal level as well as a professional, um, and it sort of happened organically. I, I've never really seeked it out. Um, I'm not really sure there is a is a book to do it. I think probably just asking a question once you've got a connection. I'm not sure I'd be just reaching out without knowing that individual. Sure. I think you probably got to have some sort of relationship um, so they know you uh, – a little bit or, or some way so that they can sort of help shape your career, but they know you from doing it. I think it'd be a bit strange just to reach out to somebody you don't know to try and then, would you be a mentor? I think it would, I'm not sure it would land establish as well as- Establish a relationship first. Definitely establish a relationship first. Hopefully with somebody that knows you somewhat and then they can help shape your career and help sort of answer questions when you're going through that. The other thing that you just um, made a comment about that I wanted to stop on was around the, the filling your resume. Mm. Uh, and you mentioned that there was a, a thought uh, for a minute there that jumping around too much might be detrimental or form an opinion for someone in the future. Um, I think it's a really interesting one because I think that goes through everybody's head at one point, um, either because they've changed roles a couple of times. And then I think conversely today, when you're in a role for too long, potentially, mm. um, talk about when you're looking to hire people um, or interview people for roles, is, is it still a consideration that always oh, had three jobs in three years, that's a red flag or is it a case by case? I think it's case by case. I think th th there's instances when it sort of makes sense. I think mm -hmm. agency world, there's quite a lot of churn. Um, jumping around, you can sort of, I guess, quantify the why and, and the sort of good reason for it. I think, I think most of the time, as long as there's a good reason for it, um, it's okay. I think it get you, you get a little bit nervous when you see a CV and there's a lot of jumping in 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 sort of a year or two years. I think as long as there's sort of a year plus, um, I think you can sort of um, talk it and, and talk the reasons why. Um, but it's definitely case by case. Yeah. 
And I, I would say in our industry, there is so much to learn in 12 months. You almost expect someone's going to need 12 months to understand their role and their capabilities there. Yep. Um, and then from there, there's different cadences of how quickly people maybe get bored or just are ready to find a different opportunity. So, yeah, I think that's really interesting, um, especially today, you know, that gone are the consistent 20-year tenures um, mm. that, that people are having. So um, let's get into the fun stuff because I know the next role, the big role that you went to, I've heard you talk about this before, Diageo. Tell us about about that role, mate. What were you doing? How would you get the job? Yeah, as I said, I was I was, I was was lucky I was put forward um, by, by an ex-colleague or an ex-manager. Um, it's funny enough, I didn't get the first time actually. I went in and had interviews with with the sort of the hiring manager. Um, not sure they were looking for something different or they had sort of different aspirations for the role, but didn't get it the first time. Um, they what then was it? Can I ask what the job title was or what the role uh, was? Head of marketing or, or sort of head of digital for RUM, the RUM category. So the way that Diashi is set up, um, it's by um, by liquor category. Mm -hmm. So you have a rums team, you have a, a vodka team, whiskey team. Um, the vodka team are based in New York. Rum uh, was based in London. Um, stout beer based in in Ireland because of Guinness. Um, so you're you're basically working in a global role. They had global roles in London and around the world, and then you had regional teams and their market teams. My job that I went for was to work in the um, the global brand team for rum yep. um the rum portfolio for diageo captain morgan was their biggest um, the captain the captain uh good old captain and coke um but there was a bunch of sort of rums in that portfolio ranging from sort of captain all the way up to super premium um so Cathico, pampero and then up to um my personal favorite zacapa had you touched spirits or alcohol or the drinks industry in previous roles in agencies up until that point? No, most of my jobs on agency was either sort of technology, um, British Airways, British Telecom, Sony Electronics. No, no alcohol brands. Um, it did attract me, I think, from an advertising and sort of brand building point of view. I think that was one of the reasons I wanted to get into Diageo um, was how they build brands. I think a lot of my experience was sort of agency um, I learned in in marketing that half of our job, most of our job actually is to, to build brands. Um, and Diageo has a way of building brands. It has a, a an approach to it. And it was something a bit like the, the Unilevers and the PNGs. Yeah. I knew or hoped I could learn a bunch around brand building and, and how you um, build brands and how you strategize about that before you jump into to the creative. So it was appealing probably more from that point of view rather yeah. than the category and the and the sort of the, the alcohol side. And some of these brands are over 150 years old. Yeah. Um, and and so the opportunity to work on some of them was just something that really attracted me. Um, based in London, a global role as well, I think was an attraction. That's cool. Um, to sort of launch brands in, in certain markets, to, to oversee and manage and be a guardian of a brand globally was attractive. Uh, I think working with the US was a, a significant part of that global business was also attractive. Um, majority of my time before that had been a lot of sort of regional, so Europe and, and market, England. Um, so global, how you build brands and learning how to properly do that. Um, and in London and alcohol was was pretty attractive. I, I want I want to hear some fun stories because you know the the marketing and advertising around Captain Morgan you know recently has been on point. It's mm. been everywhere. It's been it's been really cool. Um, you've already told us you know in some of those early agency roles doing some coding and some banners that 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 doesn't sound interesting compared to what I'm sure you're going to tell me about you know some of your travels etc. What were some of the wow moments in in that new heavy hitting industry of um, advertising liquor? Yeah, like it was, um, it was a great fun job. I think Captain especially, um, I think what made it unique and still makes it unique today is you've got Sir Henry Morgan, a real person, which not a lot of people realize is Captain Morgan, um, a buccaneer, not a pirate, as we always say. Um, so you had that heritage of a historic real figure. He was the only uh, buccaneer pirate to um, take on Drake in, in sort of Panama. And it was all that sort of historic uh, or history to it. But the sort of the fun side of it was running around with a guy dressed up as a pirate or a buccaneer was, was pretty fun. Um, we had some trips down to South Africa around the World Cup. We act activated around that and took a, a bunch of um, of people, 18 to sort of 30 year olds from around the world down to South Africa and showed them a, an interesting time, legendary time. Uh, and it was all about adventures, um, a bit like the captain. Another one was we went to, uh, we hired an island in, uh, in the Caribbean 
Captain's Island. Um, and we, uh, yeah, we put a, put a fun week on a competition, digital competition, upload a video back in those days. Hopefully uh, a lot better than the fire festival of recent times. Yeah, it was a lot better than that. <laughs> um, and then there was other, like, it, it was a really great time. Sort of a lot of the on trade activation was fun getting into bars and activating and trying to bring the energy. I think half the, 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 the sort of the job working on captain was around sparking legendary times with mm-hmm. sort of the proposition and so the timing of when we went into bars how we activated how we turned up having a the sort of personification of the brand as a as a real human coming in bringing that energy um was really interesting and and, and even today i'm still um good friends with uh with the, the global captain who trained and engaged and, and did a lot of the work um and so it was, a, it was a really great time but but it wasn't just captain actually i think some of the other brands were really interesting Um, across the portfolio. Um, But Captain was the main one, activating it globally, traveling around the world, um, and really learning how to build brands, I think was was what really attracted me to the the job and why I loved it so much. And it's a this is a big step for you, right? Like mm. this is a this is a dream job, but you've obviously had to make some adjustments, learn fast, learn new things, be yeah. good, be great to actually get it and then succeed in it. You know, you're in the role for four and a half years, mm. I believe. So you know, talk to me about um, that transition, if you will, because you mentioned Diageo. You didn't have to work in the the liquor industry to hear that that name and that brand and that company all the time. Yeah. Um, and you talked about you know going and working for brands that are hundreds hundred year hundred years old. There's a lot of responsibility on you as an employee to make sure you keep everything true to that brand and represent it as best as you can. That's a big step up for someone that's young. Can you can you remember like? just taking that in or did you just take it on the fly and, and, and rip in? Yeah, look, I think um, I think the, 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 the amazing thing about Diageo was the training and development it put into its people, again, right. um, sort of took away any of that sort of concern around it. I think um, it has a really clear sort of Diageo's way of building brands, a sort of a training manual, if you like, that is consistent around the world. So um, it sort of was really helpful in terms of how you understood the brand, what was its sort of spirit and how you'd bring it to life. Um, and so the training and development at Diageo was was pretty cool. Um, and I think that really made me sort of lift from my experience in an ad world and, and having a marketing degree to really understanding proper marketing and, yeah. and how you become more strategic. Um, I had a great boss, a couple of great bosses there actually. And I've been really fortunate through all my career that, that I've learned a bunch from different bosses along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, I learned about the big idea there actually. Um, I remember taking an idea to my boss at the time and, and his feedback was, it's not a big idea. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, where's the big idea? How do you blow this out? How do you make it so it can be executed across all the channels? And I sort of walked away from that reading a little bit around, okay, I need to rethink this. And I think that, that sort of changed my perception around marketing and how you come up with ideas. Um, but no, I don't think it was a time when I was sort of concerned. I think you just have to roll with it. You have to lean in and want to learn. Um, you, you should be sort of respectful to the brand and the company you're working for and want to learn, develop, and hopefully um, that will stand you in good stead. Anything that you can remember stuffing up, missing, doing wrong, or, or um, is there any anything you can talk about, you know, is there anything you see when people come in and don't succeed in a business like that that has that kind of nostalgia behind? It? Is there anything you can share that you've seen there? Yeah, look, I think um, you always learn more from your mistakes than your sort of successes. I think that's a uh, something that's, that's talked a lot about, but I think that is the reality. Um, yeah, there's a few mistakes. I think um, the agencies you pick and work with. I think the brief, the briefing is so mm. critical. I think there was a, probably a couple of briefs that went in that weren't with were the sharpest briefs. The proposition wasn't as great as it could be, or the audience work wasn't there. Um, and so then the work came out the other side wasn't probably meeting our expectations. And I think a lot of the time, I'm working from an, coming from an agency side. I sort of understood it's not all the agency's fault. A lot of the time, it's actually the client's fault, or it's shared responsibility um, to get the right brief. Sort of shit in, shit out. Is sort of the the adage goes, and I think that is important. I learned that a lot at Diageo. The time and th- work and effort to get the brief right, um, and the strategy behind that. That's where I sort of learned learned to be strategic. I think more than sort of executional in past roles. Um, but yeah, I think I think the brief was a key sort of learning. I think another learning was just being open to sort of feedback yep. and not being defensive. Um, and I think sort of always having that that people are coming with positive intent to make things better. Yep. Sort of growth mindset um, is sort of another way of putting it. I think that was something I learned at Diageo is 
I wasn't right half, most of the time. And I think I could learn a bunch from uh, my boss and my peers and, and people in the business who had done it for either longer or, or, or better. So being open and learning um, and learning a few mistakes and trying not to make them again, I think was, was critical. As I mentioned, you were there for about four and a half years. Um, yep. What kept you there? What kept you motivated? How did your role change or grow during that period? Yeah, um, my role sort of was broader. So it's sort of the digital, but also the marketing. So I think having um, having both those in my remit was was interesting. Um, the other thing is Diageo does a lot of innovation around product. Um, and I think that keeps it interesting. Learning or launching, sorry, into about 15 markets. I think that was really sort of, a great learning for me around, okay, not every market's the same, not every country's the same. So I knew that from travels, but I think from a marketing point of view, the cultural nuances, the audience work you need to do, um, the supply chain, it, it was sort of quite broad, um, but launching into a market like India um, is very different to sort of building out a brand in, in, in Europe. So that kept me really interested, kept me developing. Diageo is a great company that keeps you um, on your toes around your development and, and wanting to make sure you grow and, and puts a lot of things in place to help that and make that happen. Um, but it wasn't sort of one or two things. I think it was a bunch of a bunch of areas around the, the brands I worked on, the company I worked for, um, and launching into markets and building new platforms and creative ideas and comms ideas just kept it really interesting. And you're running around with a guy dressed as a pirate. Like, what, what more could you want, though? That is true. That is true, mate. Um, Buccaneer, sorry, not pirate. Buccaneer, 100%. Love the captain. Um, you've mentioned a couple of times now in, in – with we mentioned it earlier with with, um, with Google around culture, mm. um, also around coaching development, and, and now you've mentioned it in some of these earlier roles. That's obviously been an important thread um, that's been luckily for you consistent but also one of your priorities this whole career journey. Yeah, I think the, the culture bit – the priority of wanting to work with a company and for companies that have a strong culture has come later in my career, if I'm right. honest. Um, and, and it's been sort of something that's sort of grown, maybe without me realizing, but but something that became more important the, the latter years. I've been really lucky, if I'm honest, that the companies I work for have been great in, in, in their culture, um, majority of the time. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I think, the, the the culture bits ladder. I think the development of people again. You don't quite realise what you're getting at the time until you look sure. back and until you're in a sort of a leadership role where you're developing people and, and talent. How important that is. Um, so some of these things you just don't realise as you're going through it until you look back. Um, but culture is super important. I think people and development and talent again is really important. During this period, were you doing any of your own? I guess extracurricular. Um, learning or research or studies, anything outside that you were doing beyond your everyday job? Um, no, the, the only area I'd probably always been interested in is sort of digital and technology. And yep. so um, blogs and literature online, offline around digital and the sort of digital revolution I remember talking about years ago and, and how we're in the middle of it. I think that was something I would always lent into from back in that day at Hewitt Packard and got that sort of bug. When I went back to university, I didn't sort of mention it, but I, I sort of focused on third generation mobile communication and the impact that was going to have. Quite ironic that we're launching 5G now, 20 years later. But um, um, yeah, I got the bug for digital and I think that was a, an area um, that, that I always wanted to sort of keep keep on top of the new things that was happening and keep learning about it because it was, and it continues to still do, be such a fast moving area and things change a lot. Um, so I think you have to stay on the pulse of what's what's new, what's happening. Um, and so that was an area on top of my sort of day job that just naturally happened, but 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 really wanted to stay on top of those new trends and, and the things that were happening in that world. It's a perfect segue for your next role. Um, moving to McDonald's, mm. moving to Australia yeah, to lead the digital department um, and really undertake a digital transformation for a very famous, very big, very successful business. Yeah, That is slow moving in some certain ways. You came out here to Australia to revolutionize and digitize that business. Yeah, um, Talk me through the move to Australia and yeah. talk me through getting that role and how you got it with McDonald's. Yeah, the... Um the move to Australia was a, a bit of a lifestyle change. If you, if you like, I had two small children. We'd been in London, my wife and I, um, what, 10 years at the time, uh, maybe a bit longer. And I think we felt like it was the right time to sort of move out to suburbia, as it were. Um, but I don't think we were quite ready to, to sort of to go out to the suburbs of London and travel in. And, and, and so we wanted a bit of a, our own life adventure. Um, and my wife and I had both independently traveled to Australia, as I mentioned earlier. And so 
we sort of just felt the opportunity was there to to give it a crack um, and have a bit of a change in lifestyle, change in life. Um, it wasn't all the sort of the beaches and the and the laying back and taking it easy that was the attraction. I think it was more just a, a bit of a change and a lifestyle, a sort of a lifestyle challenge. Um, yeah, so we decided we'd, we'd want to move out um, and started putting the feelers out. I talked internally to Diageo and um, they were pretty amazing actually. And I had a job lined up to, to work in, in the Diageo right. office here. So I could have sort of moved internally. Um, but then I got this phone call from a, a headhunter. Um, my CV had, made, CV had made it through through this lady and, and sort of McDonald's um, was put on my pl- plate. I think that my first reaction was sort of, I'm uh, not, not really sure actually. I, the more I understood about the opportunity, the more... Uh, I talked to the sort of the hiring manager um, or the CMO at the time and how visionary he was and he sold it pretty sold it pretty well um, and so we decided it was a it was a sort of a, a too good to be true opportunity where the brand was strong but it hadn't been digitalized um, it needed to transform um, it had a huge amount of resources to be able to do that but it was pretty slow in sort of catching up I think its competitors at the time were ahead and so the attraction to lead, the transformation of a brand the size of McDonald's to build a team um, and to, to really lead that in a, in a market the size of Australia and and plus at the time I didn't realize but but understood now and sort of through that process that Australia was a key market for McDonald's globally I think three four in the world um, innovative market delivered McCafe and, and other innovations into the sort of the global system that was McDonald's and you know it well having worked with you there um, the attraction was too good to, tr- to be true from a from a job point of view um, and it really became a bit of a dream job actually I think that that opportunity to transform um, yeah it, it was attractive and so we packed our bags we, we packed up the cargo box um, and moved out to Australia to sort of give ourselves a bit of a life challenge and if I'm honest I wanted to give myself a bit of a work challenge I think I could have yep. somewhat made it easier for myself to to move internally with Diageo um, understood the categories and understood the sort of the the, the brands and, and actually um, Bundy was in my in my remit at the time right. from a global point of view but but didn't travel that far outside of Australia um, but no I think the McDonald's challenge uh, work and life change at the same time um, felt like uh, too good to be true and you know what a, just talk about the difference there between dream job because of the company I want to work for yeah you know, I mentioned earlier um, you just have to talk to a handful of students and plenty of them are going to say Google mm. right just purely not necessarily know what they want to do there but just work for Google yeah conversely there are dream jobs that come up because of the actual work that you want to do the um, the products you get to touch or the campaigns you get to run etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah um, just talk about that switch you know what was it that hooked you? onto the job you got to do with McDonald's? Yeah, I think McDonald's actually was more the the job and I'm my boss, if I'm honest. I think the, the job was just sort of white piece of paper, build out the digital strategy um, in a company the size of McDonald's with a thousand restaurants. Um, I, I like a fry or, or a burger now and again. Um, so the product was attractive as well, but but the job to, to lead the transformation um, was really attractive as well as then um, the person I'll be working for. I think Mark at the time um, really uh, painted a picture that, that that we could somewhat do anything we wanted to from a build up the strategy. Um, he didn't really tell me about how we'd have to engage the licensees, but that was fun fun going and sort of learned a bunch about stakeholder management. But um, it was that opportunity to sort of build out the strategy, build a vision. Um, I also wanted to get a bit more commercial. I think in a global role in Diageo, it's more brand and you're creating comms at a, a sort of global level and you are sort of somewhat overseeing the commercials, but you're not deep in it. And I think getting into a market, working for a commercially led, as you know, company like McDonald's, um, that was an area sort of building out my, um, I guess my capabilities that I wanted to sort of lean into. Um, and so, yeah, that that was the attraction, less the culture in the company, I guess. And, and it's a very interesting insight. And was that thought process, especially around the, I need a little bit more commercial experience, was that foresight into five to ten years down the track or was it more as of today I need some more commercial a bit of both I think that the the, as of today I felt that was an area I could improve um and so it's definitely an area I I sort of even at Diageo I remember talking about it in my sort of development plans with my boss at the time is is getting a bit more commercial and learning about the P&L and and learning about that but I think it was also longer term to be a CMO which which 
like that is the the, the game that I want to aim for and, and want to achieve. Um, I think you've got to be commercial. Um, CMOs that aren't um, probably aren't aren't as successful as, as others. So um, yeah, short term saw the opportunity or the need, but it was definitely to build out for the longer term, I guess, opportunity. And was there any huge learnings that you got out of that that have set yourself up for this role you're in now? Is that was there again back to a mistake or an opportunity you took or a risk that you took that paid off? At Maccas? Yep. Um, yeah, there was a bunch of learnings. I think the the key one um, was stakeholder management, and and it was something that, that I'd been doing quite a lot on Diageo, and it was a sort of a strength. Um, at Diageo, we were working with various markets and various stakeholders, so um, stakeholders was quite different but but you had to manage it well mcdonald's and and i joke about it i sort of had 250 bosses um looking after my marketing or digital plan and that is the licensee community who drive a lot of the um or or the company has to engage them around the plan the business plan but also the marketing plan so i think that was the biggest i think learning for me was around um was around the, the sort of operator engagement the other piece was a sort of setting a vision um, and delivering a sort of a roadmap to get there. I think that was an, an area um, that a bit of it at Diageo, but but having that white piece of paper at Macca's um, and having a boss who was supportive of saying, What's your, where are you going to go? Where do you want to take this? I can help work through how we're going to get there and we'll engage the right people along the way. But I learned a sort of around setting a vision is, is critical um, for a company, for a brand. Um, and then the roadmap, how you're getting there. Uh, and then the stakeholders you have to engage along the way. They were sort of the big areas I learned. Um, it was great fun. I think innovating um, with McDonald's, they wanted to be first on most things. So uh, we launched a bunch of sort of new advertising products. We built out the sort of e-commerce platforms and led the way globally as well as in the market on some areas. So I think um, we had the resources to, to really drive, drive it hard. Um, and as you know, we had some fun along the way. Dude, mate, everything from Monopoly to uh, digitizing drive through <laughs> Yeah, indeed. Let's quickly jump to today, the biggest change, the biggest change from previous jobs you've done, previous work you've done, previous companies you've done, set us up for life at Google. What's what's the biggest wow that comes out? Um, the people it has blown me away. I think the, the, the people in the company are amazing and it's not sort of just one of those things you just say lightly. Um they're not only are they super smart, but they're super authentic and, and, and super empathetic. And I think you, I'm working on, and that's why I love the company so much. I'm working for a company where the people really care um, and the people are wanting to do amazing things and be helpful and drive um, the products and, and do it in a way that is respectful and thoughtful of not only the user and their privacy, but also of each other. And I think the scale of the company and holding the culture true as it, as it grew um, and being clear about its purpose, but having just amazing people around around you doing it is is what blows me away every day. Um, I think that's what what attracted me to the company, um, but also just just every day I'm just so blown away by the people and, um, and the sort of, yeah, the engagement, I guess. I could talk to you for two hours or more, but um, I'm gonna wrap this up with our student question of the week, because uh, it's a perfect segue talking about people. So this question from, comes from Kara. And her question is, what's the one consistency you see in the people at your current role? What's the one consistency I see in the people in the current role? Um, Authenticity is probably the biggest one. I think um, the the people are authentic. um, And I think that's critical in today's world. If you're going for jobs and if you want to, um, if you want to get and land hopefully dream jobs, I think being authentic both to yourself but also in the, in the role you do, um, that is super consistent in Google. Like the authenticity in that building, in that company, um, it, it's pretty amazing. And I think as an individual, um, if you can be authentic and if you can hold that integrity high, um, both from what you do from a professional point of view, but I think actually per- personally as well, hopefully it stands you in pretty good stead to, to have a decent career and um, have some fun along the way. Perfect, Mark. I really appreciate our chat. Thanks so much for being on the Dream Job Ready podcast. Can't wait to see what else happens with you and your role at Google. Thanks, Sharpie.